you know, we want to study like, like, so like, so like, 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 like,
need to know what job you're applying for. You're going to research the company you're applying to. You need to know about that company. You need to be able to ask questions about that company. We had somebody come in this summer, interviewed for a job here on campus. He had no questions about the school with the dean. In the dean's mind, that automatically disqualified her. So you need to have some questions ready. So anticipate the questions you're going to get based on your resume, based on your cover letter. There's probably some questions they're going to ask you about. Our job is to steer them to ones we want to answer, or perhaps steer them away from the ones we don't want to talk about. So setting things up, making sure we put that in the right direction. You want to develop your own questions. You want to practice your mock interview skills. And even if you're outside this class, going over those questions with somebody before you go out to do that interview is probably a good idea. Also, practicing things in the mirror is not a bad idea either, especially if you've got facial expressions like mine. What is it? They call it movie face around campus. So I have kind of a, that stern face I get from my dad, and everybody thinks I'm ready to kill them. That's not my intention. That's just where my face rests. But... And then we got to talk about dressing appropriately for the job you're interviewing for. My good rule of thumb is you dress, try to dress one step better than everybody else in the room. So I went to interview for my postdoc. I wore Carhartt jeans, a dress shirt, and a tie like I have now. And then a Carhartt jacket because I knew I'd be out in the barns. So I was wearing a tie there. They told me you could lose the tie. I didn't, but they told me I could lose the tie because they're very informal there. But doing my research, I know I'd be dressed one better than everybody in the room. So trying to sort that out. So we'll cover all these in the next three or four weeks. So understand the job that you're working for, looking for. So you need to know the job. Which parts can you do and which parts can't you do? How are you going to explain the parts you can't do? How are you going to react to those? So know that job as posted. So break it up into the absolute required qualifications. At SUNY, we have the required qualifications, and then we have the preferred qualifications. You absolutely positively have to meet the first required qualifications. Um, qualifications, you don't get interviewed. And right now, with Professor Marshall's position, we're asking the question, <laughs> do we have the right required ones? Because we're not getting people that we want in that interview pool. So we're asking again, do we have the right required qual qualifications? And then taking a look at the uh, required, usually at his degree level, our provost wants PhDs. Period, end of story. Is that the right way we need to be? As a PhD, I know I, everything I learned to teach in the classroom, I didn't learn in my PhD program. I learned it from working on a farm, sorting things out, there's a lot of experience and practicality that had nothing to do with my degree for this job. How many years of experience do you have or do they require job specifications, experience? Has anybody ever heard of the 10,000 hour rule? If you want to play violin at the highest level, where would you end up? New York Philharmonic, London Symphony Orchestra, the best places in the world to play a violin. They went through and looked, how did the people that are there get in that position? Were they somehow prodigies at a young age and they just understood the violin and they got all the way through and they became that? Didn't always work out that way. 
Some got a late start. Some had no real talent to begin with. But it comes down to, did you put in the practice time? And that magical thing is 10,000 hours. So what does 10,000 hours work out to? Standard work week, 40 hour work week, how many years? Forty hours a week, fifty weeks a year is what? See that math quick in your head? Forty times fifty, two thousand. Two thousand hours a year is a standard work year for most human beings. So that's five years of work to get those ten thousand hours in. If you work some of those farm hours, 60, 78 hours a week, you could probably get it done in under three years. Putting in that time is more important than natural talent. So that's one of the reasons they ask for years experience. Hard skills they're looking for. What do you have to absolutely be able to do when you walk in the door? There's no negotiation. Then there's preferred skills. What skills and qualifications are considered a bonus? We absolutely need this, but if you could do this as well, that would kind of help you get in the door. Additional degrees that might be helpful and demonstrating those soft skills that everybody talks about is probably to the positive as well. So when you're looking at it, what are the expectations of the job? What's the typical work week going to look like for you? Can you do all the skills that you think need to be done in this job? If you can't, are you willing to learn? If you can't, what are you going to tell them? You have to have those answers ready. It's great if you can talk to per current or previous employees at a particular spot. Get a feel for that position. What are they looking for? What kind of people are you going to be interviewed by? Because oftentimes you're interviewed by people you're not going to actually be working with. And that could be awkward. Especially if those people, like if they're in HR department, don't understand anything about the job they're interviewing you for. So you got to be able to communicate those things. And sometimes talking to current or previous employees Gives you a feel for both the environment that you're in, as well as the skills and things that are absolutely necessary that you do, both in the interview and then on the job on the other side. You have to prove your case and you need to go in with a game plan. How am I going to prove that I am the best person for the job? What five things do I want them to know about me before I leave? I got to tell that. To everybody. I want to be able to tick all those points. Everybody's following the presidential thing. The answer is probably no for you guys, but they don't care what the question is. They give their canned responses, right? My talking points. What are your talking of points going into this interview? What key phrases, what key words are you going to use during the interview? So what do I do up the dairy? If I've got somebody coming in to look at the dairy program, what do I want to tell them? For a hands-on school. I know what you need to know. For family, with all the good, good and bad that comes with. We're a practical for-profit, quote-unquote, farm, or not a research farm. Those are things I try to weave in through because I think those are the mo most important things that people need to know. So those are my talking points. What do you want to know? What five things, what three things do you want them to know about you before that interview is over? What are you going to focus on? You want to research that company. You can certainly do that by talking to people who work there. But if it's a larger company, 
And we need to take the time to see what the big picture is about. Do they have an online presence at all? And usually with an online presence, we got mission statements, vision statements. This is what's important to us. We showed you some of those back in the beginning of the semester. And then how are you going to enhance those vision statements? How are you going to enhance that mission statement? How are you going to be part of that company moving forward? A website and or Facebook and just where are they popping up in the news? Maybe that's something you need to know about. It's not always positive. So other public records. Most. Both companies have to have their paperwork filed somewhere. So records of incorporation or anything like that. Police blotters. Is there anything I should know about related to crime related to this business? Lots of public records out there. Get beyond that first Google search and see what you can find. The more information you can find, the better prepared you can be for the job search at hand. So what is their mission? What is their vision? What's their strategy? What's important to them? And how are you going to fit into that position? Or do you want to say, you know, I don't agree with the way you're doing things. I don't want to be part of this. You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. At least that's the way it should be. If you want the job, you need to illustrate how your views are going to match theirs. How your work ethic, your job is going to help them move and meet their vision. So again, looking for those specific words, looking for those phrases that match things up. Everybody's heard about the elevator speech. If I'm riding with somebody in an elevator. I've got a minute, maybe, to talk to them before they walk out that door. Is there something I can talk to them and focus on in that minute that will convince them to do what needs to be done? Everybody seen the match statement. Take a wooden match, light it, hold it by the end, and I've got to be able to communicate my point before I can't hold that match in my hand anymore. 10 seconds, 15 seconds. I've got to catch them. Of course, some people are impervious to pain, but I'd probably drop the match in about 10 seconds. So how... How coordinated can I be? How definitive can I be in those short statements? Take a look around, see what they're proud of recently, see what their accomplishments are, see what they are considering a success, how they promote their company, what's important to them, what do they consider a good thing? And again, is this something you want to be part of? So where are you going to fit in the company? Learn about this company. How are you going to fit in? How are you going to be part of their bigger picture? What's your puzzle piece for all this? To help them achieve their goals, their strategy, their vision. Is there some way you can help them forward? Study the company and generate questions to ask. So what does all this research on the company tell you? Tell the company. You care. I took the time. I care. I know all about you, and I still want to be part of this. It also helps if you have questions, they're not the ones controlling the interview. It's now back and forth. I have an, uh, uh, I have a way or an opportunity to help steer this conversation this direction. Sadly, you look at most interview questions and most people fall back onto the standard questions. Why is that? Interviewers are lazy. 
They're going to look up the questions or remember the questions that were asked of them, and they're just going to add the same ones. <coughs> in theory, these questions like, why are you interested in this position? What's your ideal job? What skills and experience do you have that would make you the best choice for this job? Are probably answers they think they want to know. There's some research out there that if you want to know the true answers to these questions, you probably don't want to ask the interviewee for that. That's another story. These questions are going to be asked, at least a subset of them. So we're lazy, and this is the way everybody does it. So if this is the way everybody does it, you have to understand that you've done enough prep work that you know the dance. I show up, they ask me these questions, I have the right answers for those questions. There's no reason these should be a surprise to you. And being able to do that dance back and forth, they ask the question, you give the answer. Next question, answer. Everything flows a lot smoother than you sitting there. You know what's going on, you're prepared, you're ready. There are behavior related questions. They're trying to get a feel for how you react in certain situations. So this was a favorite of a past manager up the dairy. Tell me a time when you failed and what you do about it. That was his modifier at the end. This one is how do you, Explain how you overcame this. Say, tell me a time you really fucked up and how'd you deal with it. Everybody should have an answer to that question. Everybody have a time they messed up. Yeah, I got lots of them. Take your pick. So what are they looking for here? These behavioral related questions. How do you describe yourself? What are they looking for? How you manage that? They're looking at somebody who plays well with others. Is positive rather than negative. I failed, but it wasn't my fault. It was this person's fault. They want you to accept responsibility. You want to be productive, positive. Everybody mis makes mistakes. What are you going to do about it? What's the phrase? Doesn't matter how many times you fall down, is that you get up the same amount of times, right? You don't stay down. You get back up and fix it. Me messing with the TMR tracker up the dairy once, I was trying to put in dollar amounts for the um, forages so we could start to track, let the computer track costs and all that stuff. Got a call three o'clock the next morning. Mooney's dry matters are all screwed up. What the hell did you do? Somehow they got moved from the dollars to the dry matters. So sixty-six dollars a hundred or a ton for dry for as fed ton for haylage somehow became sixty-six percent dry matter. A very different mix than a 30% corn silage dry matter. I got up there and I fixed everything, but had a big pens one and four were a little messed up for the next few days. So how did I fix that? I accepted responsibility and I came up with a solution as quick as I could. He went and fed the heifers. We figured out what was wrong in TMR tracker. He went and fed the heifers. I went through and figured out how to go and put enough corn silage in those rations so we had enough fiber so those cows didn't acidosis, DA, all that fun stuff. So they were very happy to eat all that extra grain, but we tried to minimize what was going on. So I went through a process, accepted my res the responsibility. I went through and I fixed it at 3 o'clock in the morning. Things like that, you need to tell a story like that so it shows you're reliable, you're responsible, you're somebody that can be trusted. You're going to get things done and move forward. 
So questions in the interview process. There are the two worst places to be in an interview. Does everybody know where those are? Being the inter nobody wants to be the interview more any more than you want to be the interviewee. That's why we fall back on here's the most commonly asked questions. We'll ask the same questions everybody else does. So both sides of the table, unless you work in HR and that's where you love to be, are uncomfortable. Your job is to make it as comfortable as possible. And sometimes it's more fun than others. You can go through and you can really screw people up. You can take the interview in weird directions if you are good at moving a conversation around, depending on who you're dealing with. So between the interviewee and the interviewer, there's a chance. You're expected to have answers to these questions. Good answers. If it didn't, it tells them you didn't do the prep work. If you're not going to be ready today at this interview, then can I expect you to go to work and be ready on every other day? Most standard interview people say no. If they're not ready for the interview, then they're not going to be ready to work. That's not a perfect correlation, but that's the one people assume. So two worst places for interviewing person asking the question, the person answering the questions. Neither one of them is fun. So the purpose of the interview, the purpose of the questions is they're trying to find out whether you're going to fit in this organization. Do you fit? Are you going to be productive? Is there something good going to happen if we hire you? So checking on that fit. They're going to check, are you prepared for this interview? Have you done the prep work? Have you researched the company? Do you give a damn about what's happening here today? That's one thing I look at. Can you do the job? That's going to be part of the discussion. Well, I see here you've done this before. Can you describe that? Is that the same as we have here? I don't see anywhere in your resume or cover letter where you can have, you have this skill. Do you have that skill or not? We're looking for holes, we're filling things. Probably more than anything else, and this is kind of scary, they decide in the first two minutes whether they're gonna hire you or not. The next 25, 30 minutes is justifying why they made that choice. First impressions. I went on one job interview once and I was uh, called by a headhunter at grad school. He said, would you go and interview at this place? I said, okay. And he's like, as soon as you're done, call me. Now this is in the days before cell phones. So I had to wait until I got down the highway to a rest stop. I called the guy on the phone and he goes, so how'd it go? I said, it's probably pretty bad. I said, what do you mean? I said, they're not gonna hire me. He said, how do you know that? Because the guy said he wasn't. Oh, that's not true. They're going to hire you. They're not going to hire you. I'll call and talk to him. Never heard from that hunter again. So we're trying to figure out the fit. They may have decided already. A lot of it, unfortunately, comes back to whether they like you or not. The unfairness of life. Some people are better interviews than others. Do you fit? Do they wish to hire you? and hopefully get a feel for who you are. And then how are you gonna fit in that organization? So be prepared for the questions on areas. You do not match job qualifications. If you go through and you look at their job qualifications and you only hit half of them, you know they're going to ask you about the ones that don't appear in your resume, the ones you don't discuss in your cover letter that say, yes, I can do it. No, I can't. When I came here, I, I'm a nutritionist on paper. I was hired as a repro specialist to teach repro classes. That was flat out, can you teach these classes? I was like, yep, I can. So through the course of the day, I was proving to them 
that even though I didn't on paper have the qualifications they were looking for, I could do the job. I talked to some peers, I talked to some mentors, and they're like, Mooney, you know what a freshman needs to know about Reefer. Been out on a farm, you've had the classes, you know what they need to know. Now, maybe I fall short in the advanced classes, but I can learn things. I had what I needed to do. If you're talking to them, try to stay away from your weaknesses. You got to be honest. It's mostly honest. But try to stay away from your weaknesses. You might say it's weakness is a strength. I don't really like answering questions that way. Well, I'm such a perfectionist. That's my weakness. You know, that I don't like going in that direction. But there's a way to handle those things. Try to stay away from them. Try to focus on your strengths and focus on the positive. So we have a couple of links embedded throughout here. Let's take a look at some of the tough questions that Indeed.com came up with. Tough interview questions. So first one that usually comes up, probably the first one in the interview, tell me about yourself. Feel they can do that well. So, what are they looking for here? I was born a long, long time ago on a farm in New Jersey. I like going to the beach down the shore, at least until they started the Jersey Shore. And it's like, oh God, that's what everybody thinks of New Jersey now. What are they looking for? I'm going to tell you about somebody. You got two minutes. What are they looking for? Interest in the job. Why you're here. Why do you want the job? Focus your answers on the job. Not getting detailed or lost on a tangent about where you grew up and all that stuff. So do this in it's kind of an icebreaker. But you're trying to answer things that are going to help them make a decision about the job. So achievements that might be beneficial to this job act, uh, job application, aspects of your professional experience that might be relevant to this job. Focus more professionally than personal. Talk about your enthusiasm for a job. What are you interested in? Why are you coming to this job? Because that's, I think, the next one. What critical feedback do you all most often receive? What do people tell you? What are they looking for here? Self-awareness. You know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Are you doing anything to alleviate those things that are might be weaknesses? Are you working towards self-improvement? Also, we might say critical feedback you receive how do you work within a professional setting? Well, they always tell me this, but I think they're all idiots. That's probably not going to help you. But I've been told, at least here at school, that I usually scare the shit out of the freshmen. Historically. I worked very hard to change some of that adding some things to the classroom, doing some things a little differently. It's sort of work, sort of doesn't. Part of it is you just kind of got to stick around and I'm reasonable after a period of time. But that's my problem getting into an interview situation. I don't always give a good first impression. 
What else we got here? Tell about time you overcame an obstacle. <laughs> what are they looking for here? Problem solving skills. Being able to accept responsibility, being able to take the lead. Fix a problem. I had a wedding, a friend of mine got married a long time ago and I was in grad school, so I was broke. I said, I'll come down. She was putting on the wedding herself, doing all the work. And I said, I'll come down a few days early and I'll help you get things done. I got there on a Wednesday. By Thursday afternoon, it's like, this wedding is not going to happen on Saturday. Me and the best, best woman had a powwow in the corner. Okay, we're going to get this done. If we're going to be ready by 10 o'clock Saturday morning, these are the things that have to be done. You got those. I got these. We delegated a whole bunch of people, and we got the thing done. After the fact, the bride is one of my best friends, said, thank God you were there because I was a mess. And the two of us basically saved that. So that is an obstacle. That was a thing. So you're looking for those take charge skills, problem solving skills. Give them the soft skills they're looking for in your answer. Can you be an asset to this particular business? How do you handle stress? All jobs have stress. How do you handle it? Out. You stay focused some way, shape, or form. Again, trying to be an asset to the company in a professional situation. What are you going to do to make things work? This one's talking about communication. That's probably one of the more important things that you'll ever run into. But how do you handle stress? Again, they're looking for how you are going to help the business make your answer work around with that. Most positive or most negative management experiences. Again, how do you work for the company? And it's your approach, your attitude, your personality, your style of doing things going to fit in this company. Being honest, but try to be positive at the same time. And if it says positive or negative, certainly go with the positive first. Your biggest weakness? This one's a tricky one. Almost if you give your full weaknesses out, that's not going to help you. So how do you sort of answer their question? Still keep them interested. One weakness has been working on my ability to provide constructive criticism. In the past, I've struggled with how to offer criticism without affecting my team's feelings. I understand how providing feedback on work or projects is extremely valuable to my team. To improve this, I've been writing down my feedback before I approach my colleagues. This helps me plan out my answer and give more realistic criticism. So that's also an answer that was probably written out in advance. With me, the first thing that comes to mind in a situation like this is almost always the thing I should never say out loud. I tend to be way too direct, way too vulgar, way too blunt. I got to wait for that second voice in my head to say, well, let's be a little bit more professional and a little bit more productive. So figuring those things out in advance is helpful. Why are you leaving your current position? Again, accentuate the positive. I'm leaving because they're all idiots. I'm leaving because I got fired. None of those are going to help you get the job. I'm looking for another opportunity. It's time to make a change. Being negative and bad mouthing your current company is not going to help you in the interview. They have a difference in the way things should be done. It's time for me to move on. 
So being professional, being as positive as you can, but still being truthful. Has anybody ever seen an interview like this? How many pennies, if you stack them on top of each other, would equal the height of the Empire State Building? Google gives a lot of questions like this, right? Everybody seen the YouTube videos about Google questions? I go, what the? I have to watch them just because I'm curious. How do you solve or answer that question? If you've got a lot of problem solving skills in a particular position, they want to see how you solve problems. Getting the right answer is not the key. How would you set up the problem? How would you go through? How would you figure that out? is probably more important. Why do you want to work here? Better have a good reason for that. Hopefully some positive things. Same thing, why might we hire you along the same lines? Trying to tell them I am the answer to your prayers in a kind of modest, effective way. You're stupid not to. I think I said that once in an interview, but um, I don't think I got that job. But anyway, do we have any regrets so far in your personal career, professional career? And what's your greatest achievement? Again, it'd be nice if you could bring it back to somehow related to the job you're applying for. There's a video associated with this up top here. You can look at that at your leisure. I'll get these slides posted. So tough questions. They're asking about past experience. Who are you? Where have you come? How did you get here? They're asking about your behavior. If this happens, what are you going to do? And is that, what are you going to do good for our company? They're looking for self-awareness. And sometimes they're just going with a gotcha question. Just to see how you react. What is a gotcha question meant to do? Stress you, mess with you. How are you going to think on your feet? How are you going to remain calm? How are you going to handle and move through this question. I'm not talking about questions that are illegal to ask, but just let's take one from right field and just let's see how they dance. So what we're gonna focus on is some questions right here. This is gonna be part of your homework assignment. So you're going to have 10 questions to play with. That I want hard, long, well thought out answers for. And then there's some other ones that you can address. Put forward as you need to. So I want like long, full paragraph kind of answers for the first 10. And then I want some key points, bullet points for the remaining 16. So we'll get this Word document posted. I want to give you a hard copy moving through. So we're going to have, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. We're probably going to break up into four groups. We're going to draw these questions, the first 10 questions from the hat, and you're going to answer them in front of your peers next week. I could go through and we can each have one person answer a question in front of the class, but that's about all we do next week. We break it up into smaller groups. It gives you a chance to speak your answers out loud and see how they flow. So we got 
Ask me about yourself. Why are you the best person for your job? Why do you want this job? How's your experience prepared you for this role? Why you're leaving or have left your job? What's your greatest strength, greatest weakness? How do you handle stress or pressure? What are your salary expectations? What are your career goals? This dovetails in with, um, I have that down there. Yeah, that's the fourth one in the next list. So we got, how do you handle success? How do you handle failure? How do you work well with other people? Why should we hire you? Where do you see yourself in X number of years, five years, 10 years? So career goals that dovetails with that one. How do you handle difficult situation with irate customer or coworker? Are you willing to try new things? Can you be flexible? How flexible can you be with your time? What about you makes you an asset to this organization? How do you feel your education has prepared you for this position? How would you describe your work ethic? How do you handle a stressful situation? Give us an example. What are your goals for yourself inside this company? Are you interested in pursuing further education? How do you work with others? How do you work in a team setting? So unless you've got a specific job, some of these might be difficult to answer with specifics. So with those specifics, I get down here, let's see. What makes you an asset to this organization? That's hard to do without having an organization. So what I want you to come up with is what things might you talk about over a range of jobs that might be helpful in the interview process. Assume everybody in here is a hard worker. That would make you an asset. I got a Morrisville education. That's going to make you an asset. So think about all the different aspects of you and your background and your experience that might be helpful in answering that question. Looking for like five different things you might be able to bring up depending on the job. Then when you get to a specific job, you've got that list there and say, okay, for this job, I'm gonna focus on number two. That's the one I need to talk about. That one's the need I need to get through. So everybody understand what I'm asking you to do. So first 10, I want your two minute speech, whatever that is. One minute, two minute speech. And you're going to present those to your fellow classmates next week. We'll have a hat or a box or whatever, and you just pull them out. That's the question you have to answer. And then notes for the other 16, because odds are you're going to get a bunch of these in any interview you go on. So having things in your back pocket, remembering we're trying to focus on the job, we're trying to answer in a way that makes them feel comfortable about hiring us. Tell me about yourself is not like, I was born a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They wanna know what about you, why are you here for this job, and what can you bring to the job? They don't care what high school I went to or anything like that or where I grew up. They want to know what you're going to do for them if they hire you. So follow-up questions. I think these are part of your 16. Going through. And then these are the last sets of questions. You see I copied and pasted them directly into the document because I still have that extra capitalization down there at the bottom. So I'll put this list up on Brightspace. So if you want to work on that Word document, you can. Um,
So next week, we'll talk about developing questions to ask. They're going to come to a point at some point. They're going to ask you, do you have any questions for us? And the worst thing you could say is no. Now, maybe you got all of your questions that you have. This is what I did with Dr. Nyberg over there. Well, I wanted to know about this. You told me that already. I want to know about the dairy. So I'm visiting there this afternoon. I had questions, but you've answered them all already. I had stuff. I was working on it. Showing there. And then the other flip side to what happened this summer is the person being interviewed didn't feel she was getting straight answers to her questions. Does everybody sign in? So she said, I'm not going to get straight answers to my question. Why do I bother ask, asking? You're not going to tell me the truth. That was probably not the most dip diplomatic way to answer that question, but that's what she did. <laughs> I know I had no other questions. But she should have said she should have come up with some if she wanted the job. But I think at that point she had enough. Like, no, I don't want to work with you. So I'm out of here. Any questions? Did this start to help clarify what we're looking for? Okay, we'll see you next Monday. I'll get all those links up there. If you want to read further, look at the examples that they give you. They'll help you get started. For a review session, yes. What do we got? So, so what do we got? So what do we need to do? Not much, just like if I need to report stuff or whatever, or if you have any notes for me. Okay. Um, We've got, I'll post, uh, I guess I should stop the recording. Hold on. They said this is mostly just in case of their issues in the future that they have something in writing saying that you said this was. <laughs> okay. I need to um, 